Kyle, we uh, haven't really had a chance to talk to you yet since you, since you signed. Can you just take us through a little bit of, of the summer and how you made the decision that, that this was a good, the, the best place for you here, how that came about? Yeah, um, first and foremost, uh, I had a great summer. I just want to, I got, I married my wife uh, in, Congrats. in on August 20th. Thank you. Appreciate it. So I just had to put that out there. That's the best part of my yeah. summer. <laughs> That's it. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> But um, exactly. Uh, but now um, I, I forget who I was saying this to before, but just, you know, the, it was kind of similar to um, my San Antonio days when we p had played against they, Memphis in a tough series um, where they took us six or seven games. Um, I forget what year it was. I think it was my third year in the league. But uh, you could just see the intensity and how hard Memphis played at the time and how much their fans were behind them and you know they put up a great fight in that series and I think fast forward a few years later to where I'm in a Memphis uniform playing against Minnesota in a very tough playoff series fans were great atmosphere was great those guys when I uh, Minnesota really competed um, 1 through 11 12 all those guys that came in played hard you could see the cohesiveness you could see they play hard for one another so when it came down to make a decision on you know what team I wanted to sign with I think this was the easy call um, you know knowing you know the freedom coach Finch gives his guys to play with and how they all play with confidence and they all played hard um, I could really see myself being a part of it so uh, yeah, I, I think that's just what it came down to when it was time to make a decision. Um, a lot of great young talent here, but also guys who are willing to play for one another, play hard for one another. That's, you know, that's the kind, kind of basketball I like to be a part of. And I think you made the decision before the Rudy trade mm -hmm. happened, right? So when you, you sign and, and you're in and then that comes along as well, like mm -hmm. how does that even change the view of what you think this team can is capable of doing here. yeah that's i mean that was awesome i mean i think i happened like a day or two later where we signed rudy i woke up and seen we signed we signed him that was great uh you know just another guy who you could tell likes to win i mean the proof is in the pudding with him you know his winning percentage throughout while during his time in this league has been great um you know it just kind of showed the direction that the the Timberwolves are going and you know we want to win we want to win now so uh that, that's that's what I was happy to be a part of I didn't kind of didn't really want to go to like a rebuilding process or you know you could kind of tell which teams in the league ain't trying to win I didn't want to be a part of that so uh that was that was very exciting how do you envision your role from a leadership standpoint? I mean, you're a veteran in this league. You've been around mm -hmm. for a while. And what kind of leader are you for coming to a team that has some veterans on it, but also some young pieces that probably need a little guidance? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not much of a leader to where I'm going to come in and, you know, be rah-rah like that from the first day of practice. That's not really my style. Like you said, I've, you know, I've seen some things in this league, been in some big games, you know, playoffs things like that so uh you know I feel when my voice is needed and it, it, it will be heard um I'm, I'm not gonna be someone is yelling or screaming at guys every day that's just not how I operate but uh you know if I do see a guy that needs you know see a situation that needs my input or needs help of, of course I'm gonna speak up um you know I like to communicate on the floor while I play basketball make sure everybody's on the same page so that's just kind of the, some of the things that I'll do. That's, that's just a given with me. I, I like to talk out there. I like to, you know, use my voice and things like that. Along those lines, how do you envision yourself kind of fitting alongside some of these guys, especially on the defensive end of the floor, if you're out there with Rudy or, or Carl or, or whoever? Yeah, um, you know, just, just, being, just doing my part, really, uh, whether that's keeping guys in front of me, whether that's making plays on defense, block shots, passing lanes, um, things like that. I think I could fit in really with any defense in this in, in this league. Um, so just, you know, like, like you do on offense, try to make plays on defense, um, you know, things like that. I like to rebound. Um, you know, that means I get to push the ball up the floor, so be looking to rebound and, and, and get easy offense on the other side. Did the How much did the playoff series maybe impact your, your decision to sign here? Did it? raise kind of the the view of this franchise mm -hmm. in, in your estimation going through that that series against them definitely 100 percent um you know i think the fans were awesome and then you know the team played with tenacity the team played hard um you know you you saw minnesota's owners there you know front and center every game uh during the playoffs so uh yeah, that definitely stood out to me. Obviously not at the time. I was focused on trying to win a playoff series. But, uh, you know, looking back at it, it was just like, wow, you know, Minnesota was all in. 
they were there. They were trying to win, you know, 1 through 15, the fans, the organization. So, like I said, that's something I'd like to be a part of. Before that series, did you have any idea of the basketball love here? Because, like, other trips here, you probably saw half full target centers. So, like, did your view of what this fan base can be change just from those trips? I, would it really be half full? I mean, I, I feel like there's a few organizations that, you know, despite their record, fans come out to the game and fans are heard. Like, here, of course, New York and Sacramento, I feel like those are three – teams that you know I felt even when we would beat the hell out of the Timberwolves like the fans would be there and the fans would make noise I like the little howl thing I always stood out to me so I feel like I've always enjoyed coming to play here from a fan standpoint like I don't like playing in empty gyms or where the fans are dead so like here in New York Sacramento the fans like yeah I feel like the fans are always into it regardless of their record with a in that series you saw like you know, certainly, you know, Memphis played really well, but at the ends of games, Minnesota probably made some decisions uh, yeah. that, that looked like a young team. Did, did you recognize that as, like, just kind of growing pains that a young team has to go through on its ascension? Yeah, I've been on that side with Memphis um, to where, you know, we would struggle with uh, Portland in a playing game, and then, you know, we get past the playing game and we struggle with the Utah in the first round. So uh, it's a process. I feel like you just have to grow, go through it. Um, you know, obviously we want to take bigger steps with Minnesota, but you know, being on Memphis last year, we ran into a Golden State who we were the more we were the less disciplined team. So it, it happens, but just got to pay close attention to it as a team. Everybody has to be locked in. Um, attention to detail is important in those times, and you know, it's going to show in the playoffs. Kyle, just two quick things for me. Um, some people look at your size and wouldn't maybe think that ball handling is is part of your game. Can you explain how that is part of your game? Mm -hmm. And then also just how's your, your shoulder doing and how did, you know, taking some of the summer off to, mm -hmm. to be able to rehab that go? Yeah, um, as far as the ball handling, uh, I just, my dad raised me to be a point guard. Um, so I just always had the ball handling and playmaking ability with me and then, you know, no one knew we, I was going to grow to be 6'9", so I was fortunate enough to keep that with me and keep those instincts with me. And, you know, I just love handling the ball. I've always been an unselfish guy, uh, whether that's making the right pass or, you know, getting guys, you know, involved or open, finding whoever's open. Um, that's just kind of what I do on the offensive end. And then, uh, yeah, I've, I've had a great, healthy summer. Like, that's, that's very key. I didn't have that the summer before where I was healthy all summer. Um, but this season, I've been healthy. I've been able to take care of everything I need to. And, you know, now this season, I'm ready to get the ball rolling. Uh, this, that's something you take for granted as a professional athlete is just like having healthy summer, especially as you get older. You know, 21, 22, you can be unhealthy and still be good during the season. But uh, I was very thankful to have a healthy summer this summer, be able to work hard. Kyle, welcome to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. How far back does the nickname or the moniker Slow Mo go? Mm -hmm. And how much do you embrace that nickname? Yeah, um, the nickname goes back to probably about, I remember, uh, you know, 11 and under nationals um, where, like, you know, all the best 11-year-olds come with their teams and compete. Uh, you know, I was, like I said, a taller point guard, and I had, you know, my methodical game that I still have. And, uh, you know, by – the next year, 12 and under nationals, just I, everybody was calling me slow mo. And it's crazy that it snowballed into my ninth year in the league. That's like, you know, every, you know, I was eating dinner in Italy a few years ago and people ran up and slow mo, slow mo. So that was just, you know, it's just snowballed into, you know, a pretty cool situation. Um, yeah, but since I was about 10 or 11 years old, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. They've been calling me slow mo. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir.